Hey everyone. I can hardly believe it but we're into episode 15 already. Today we're looking at the fourth game and watch issued by Nintendo. They call this mega selling game simply Fire. And Fireman Fireman in their North America launch with the cooperation of their partners Mego under their timeout brand. Alrighty then, before we open up the treasure chest that is the game and watch game called Fire, let's answer last episode's quiz question. What in the world? A snippet of a gray Nintendo logo and a single word enter. That's it. That's all you had to try and guess it. Did you know what this really was? Okay, I'm ready with the big reveal. Let's get rid of the modern Nintendo logo and the classic console. Hey it's the iconic Nintendo Entertainment System or better known as the NES. Hope you got it right, awesome if you did. Today we'll examine Nintendo's fourth game and watch of what would become the iconic Silver Series handheld fire. Also today we'll look at Mego's last offering under the collaboration they forged with Nintendo, an ending of their partnership which resulted in the final timeout branded handheld, which they called Fireman Fireman. Both offerings, those branded Game & Watch, and those branded Time Out, were both given the model code, RC04. The actual launch day and date was, July 31st of 1980. An interesting fact is that this game eclipsed the previous offerings by selling a reported 1 million copies, making it by far the best-selling, best-received handheld of this generation. Game Mode A has two fire department rescuers holding a safety net below an apartment building engulfed in flames. As the occupants leap from their condos to escape the fire, the fire rescue team have to attempt to catch them in their net. The evacuated individuals will bounce several times before they're safe in the paramedic's truck. The strobe light flashes as a soul is saved, and a point is scored for a successful rescue. Game Mode B is identical to Game Mode A, with the exception that it can have up to 9 casualties falling from the apartment building, clearly others will be in transit between the building and the paramedic truck, this is the tricky bit, they all still require additional assistance from the fire department's net. It can become quite manic in Game Mode B. The caution statements are the same as previous episodes, however feel free to pause and read the details in full. The same applies to screen viewing and maintenance. Specifications Detail Clock Accuracy, Battery Life and Safe Operating Temperatures Nintendo was consistent in their retail boxes throughout the game and watch branded series. The rectangular box was color-coded to the unit's plastic color, hence blue for the unit called Fire. It always carried the game and watch logo, the unit name and the model code. Miko the retailer for all of North America took a different approach. They packaged their games in much larger retail boxes. Choosing the color red, for the box of their version of this game. The game unit was visible through a transparent plastic window in the retail box, that originally had a foil sticker showing a simulation, or mock-up of actual gameplay. Although a Japanese advertisement, the full original 5 games of the Silver series can be seen here. Another interesting item and subsequent super rarity is the shipper. That is the name given to the wholesale boxes that were used to ship 10 brand new games to a retail store. These shipper boxes were almost always destroyed by the store personnel, but those that still exist fetch a premium price with collectors in today's marketplace. This will be the last episode featuring the Mego company and their timeout brand. However next episode I'll be showcasing the game and watch called Judge. And there's a story about these and their colors. Join me to review the games we call Judge Green and Judge Purple. Fire had an error that was allowed to be sold even after the defect was spotted. The company that manufactured the LCD screen inadvertently reversed the game screen. They accidentally placed the apartment building on the left and not on the right that was how the design was intended by Nintendo. Once identified the decision was made to continue as the error never affected the gameplay. Cameos and reruns. The most famous must be the addition to the Super Smash Bros. universe. However a single year after the initial game, a widescreen version was issued. Selling an additional 200,000 units, this game was larger and had a colored overlay. This game, like every game issued, will receive its very own episode in due course. Several reruns were made of original game and watches under the mini classic title. These key ring games are fully functioning reproductions of the much loved Silver series and many more games. Again stay tuned for these gems to get their own starring role on this channel in the near future. The other reruns mostly came from the various game and watch galleries sold for the Game Boy handhelds and later for DS, or dual screen consoles. The Game Boy Advance had an unusual little gizmo made for it, called the e-reader. 
As we head towards the completion of our look at the Game & Watch Fire, I'd like to underscore the fact that the Mini Classic, the Game & Watch widescreen and every Game & Watch gallery will receive their own episode in the future. So please hit that subscription button now. That just about wraps up our review of the 1980 Silver Game & Watch Fire. And that brings us nicely into that part of our show where I ask you the question, what in the world? Can you identify this from this partial image? Join me in episode 16 to find out. Write your best guess in the comments below and impress me. Well, thanks for watching. It'll help us a whole bunch if you'd be kind enough to press that like button, comment, but better still subscribe and follow us as we detail every Nintendo console, up close and in person.